Yeah, so welcome back to class. We are still talking about the Hodrick Presker filter technique. Now I would like to switch to a second empirical example where we can use like the Hodrick Prescott filter. It is related uh, to the famous uh, paper of uh, Taylor published in the year 1993 and it's about Taylor rules. On page like 205 it is the case that the following picture is displayed like uh, we have uh, this line here which is like the real GDP over time of the US and then there is like a straight line um, computed like the trend of GDP in order to afterwards um, compute like the output gap. Output gap is the difference between like the um, real GDP and the potential GDP in percentage terms. Uh, afterwards, it is the case that uh, the policy rate is computed, like the Taylor rule is applied, and afterwards, like the uh, Taylor rate is computed, which fits uh, very nicely with the federal funds rate. And now I have uh, created like the following data set. We have information about the GDP level. And uh, in a first step, I would like to start to compute like the trend of GDP. And I would also like to use like the Hodrick Prescott filter technique in order to compute the trend. So like in a first step, I'm taking the natural log of GDP. Um, this is performed like in column number F and I can copy like all the information down. In the next step, we have to think about tau. So in a first step, I am using a tau constant equal to 0.3. Um, but these are the cells which uh, Excel will modify in the end in order like to optimize this loss function. Um, so let's uh, go back to the slides. I'm now trying to um, compute the first part of the loss function of the Hodrick Prescott filter, which is like the realized time series minus tau in brackets to the power of two, and then we have to sum up. So let's do that. So like here, I have to compute like in brackets, the difference between GDP and tau, and then I have to square the difference. In the end, I copy all the information down and I compute like the sum of all these differences. So I'm computing like the sum of the whole of all the observations and this is like the first part of the loss function then i am computing like the tau function i open up two brackets uh, this is like tau 3 in g9 minus uh, tau 2 in g8 and then i'm subtracting in brackets g8 minus uh, g7 I close the brackets and I square it. I copy all the information down, but not to the very end, but only to the second last uh, column. Uh, then I take the sum here of all the values. So I'm taking the sum of all the changes of the changes in tau. In a next step, I have to create a value for lambda. I will assume that lambda is equal to 100,000 and then I can uh, initialize the target cell and the target cell is equal to like the sum of like the first component, the red component, uh, plus lambda times uh, the sum of the second component. So more or less in this cell here in cell H2, like it is the case that we have the sum of the first component plus lambda times the sum of the second component. And uh, now it is time to ask Excel uh, to minimize uh, this target cell. 
So I will say data solver, uh, the objective function, this is cell number H2. It has to be minimized by changing like all the tau values. All the tau values from G7 to G41 should be changed by Excel. And in the end, the value of this cell H2 should be minimized. So let's do that. Let's solve it and hope that the results make sense. Seems to be the case that this has converged. So I would like to plot GDP and tau over time. So like in the first step, I'm marking the area with GDP and tau. I say insert. And then I'll take the first one and you can also like modify the horizontal axis and include some data there. Um, you can uh, use like the time information in order to put valuable information like on the horizontal axis. So this is more or less a picture which you have seen before, like the blue line, this is like uh, the GDP and the red line, this is a trend. Hence, we can now compute like the GDP gap in the following way, like the difference between realized GDP and the trend line times 100, like this is our output gap. Now I can uh, use the Taylor rule in order to compute the Taylor rate. Uh, the formula is as follows, one plus 1.5, the inflation rate, which is given in D19, and then plus 0.5 times the output gap, which is given in J19. So I can copy all the information down. And I'm also including the actual federal fund rate. And then I'm once more creating a picture with the Taylor rate and the federal fund rate over time. I've done that already. And here you can see the chart looks pretty much the same as the one in the Taylor paper. So we are able to replicate the Taylor paper by using like the um, Hodrick press could filter technique in Excel. Thank you very much for watching this video. Have a nice day. Bye bye.